Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, this is Brian, and uh, I'm going to try to make a real quick video. This is a, uh, a new uh, type of format that I'm going to try. This is on my cell phone, so I'm recording this video, uh, uh, the screen share on my phone. And this is where I have my Bible, and I and, uh, figure I can, I can make a, a pretty neat quick video for you here. But what I wanted to do is I'm going to start here. There's a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Uh, and for instance, uh, let's see if it will let me select that. Okay. Uh, what I wanted to do was uh, talk about something. If you know anything about uh, anything that I've written in the past, uh, I've written in the past about uh, some perceived contradictions from the Bible. And I do not believe that there are contradictions. And I, I I believe that if there is something that uh, looks to be a contradiction, uh, seems uh, to be an apparent contradiction, that uh, that is where we need to dig and to adjust our understanding of what's going on. And it's usually because uh, of, of ignorance or uh, just a, a lack of understanding uh, where these particular contradictions uh, are. And usually with a little bit of study, uh, with some background, with some looking at the original languages and things like that, we're able to see that, that in fact, it's not a really a contradiction at all. And uh, that's usually where we can uh, get some uh, really good information uh, is these, these things that we, we believe to be contradictions. One of these, uh, right off the bat, is uh, from the book of... Uh, it's actually two different books. It's uh, 2 Samuel 24 and 1 Chronicles 21. And in this story, uh, it says that uh, David uh, went and numbered Israel and Judah. And, uh, you know, he goes to his, uh, his commander of his armies. His name is Joab. And he says, look, I want you to go out and number all these people. Joab sees and recognizes this as a bad decision and says so. He says, look, you know, King David, you know, uh, may you live forever and may your kingdom, you know, be, uh, you know, uh, added to, the, you know, may God add to the people a hundredfold more than they are. Um, and there's some things to this, you know, why is this bad? You know, uh, there's, there's uh, some study that you can get into with that as well. Uh, that's not really the, the point of this particular video, uh, but it's, it's bad, okay? It's bad in the sight of, of Yehovah, of God. And so because of that, uh, David is going to be punished, and he gets to choose his punishment, more or less. And down here you'll see... Um, you know, he says that he, he sinned. Okay, here it is uh, in verse 12. Thus said uh, Jehovah God, I hold three options before you choose one of them, and I do it to you. So basically the three options are seven years of scarcity, um, you know, plagues. Uh, so basically he just says, David, he says, look, let us fall into the hand of a merciful God, Okay rather than the hands of our enemies or, or what have you. So uh, there was a large amount of people died. Uh, this says 70,000 men of the people died. And if you'll look at First Chronicles, there are some small deviations from this, but it's, it's, it's got to be the exact same story because David is, is incited, so to speak, or he is uh, um, moved to to number the people. And he goes out and numbers the people. You know, Joab gives them the same same spit, uh, speech. And uh, the same three options are given to him, right? He's given three options. He chooses to fall into the hands of, of, of God. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the exact same number of people that died. Those minor things I'm not really worried about. But there's a, a larger issue. And this stems... Uh, this whole thing got kicked off with me, and the whole reason I even found this was a friend of mine were, and I, we were having a discussion about uh, the characteristics of God. And I made a comment. I said, you know, that, that God is the, uh, the one that, 
that came to David and, and moved him to number Israel. And uh, let me just go ahead and show you that right now. And notice it's in verse 1. It says, And, and the displeasure of, of Yehovah, of God, burned against Israel. This is, this is God's proper name, okay? Um, some translations, most translations will put Lord. I think uh, this one that I have up here, yeah, it says Lord. If you go to the King James, um, wow. Well, why is this not scrolling for me? Uh, if we go to the King James, you'll see that it's Lord. What it is, it's the, the proper name of God. And uh, people try to translate it. They try to uh, you know, figure out how to pronounce it because there, there are, uh, I believe there are vowels that have been found to, to help us to understand how to say it. I say Yehovah, other people say Yahweh, yod heh vav -Hey, whichever it is. But you'll see it, it is... It is God's anger burned against Israel. Let me go back. Okay. And moved David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. So who is it here that is burning from displeasure and moves David to go and number Israel? Well, from the context of this verse, it's clearly... God, right? Yehovah, God. And <clears throat> that's what I said to my partner. I said, "Look, this is this is uh this is God that is coming and he's he's inciting David to do this." But later on, a couple a couple of days actually after uh, we had this conversation, I listened to the Bible in my car and I got to this other verse which is in 1 Corinthians 21. Let's go there. And you'll see this is the same thing. It says 70,000 men, like I was saying earlier, 70,000 men died. And uh, again, he's numbering the people of Israel. But I want you to notice as we go up to the top, this particular verse says, And Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. So I was in my car and I heard that and I was like, whoa, hold on. So I immediately felt like, you know, hey, I need to repent of this because I was attributing an action to, to God that was actually Satan, right? And so I, I, uh, I stopped and I looked at it and sure enough, I found these two verses and I was like, so what's going on here? Who is doing the moving, okay? Uh, who, is, who is moving David to number Israel? And I found something interesting. And the, the majority of Bibles that I've looked at actually have, and if, in fact, we can do this. We can compare here. And you can see Satan, uh, Satan, Satan. And uh, that's Hebrew. We're going to get into that here in a minute. Uh, Satan, 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 Satan. This one actually says accuser. Uh, Satan, Satan, Satan. Uh, so anyway, as you can see, all of these, this is devil, okay? So devil is not in there at all. Adversary, that's interesting, that's nice. So let's go back um, to, this is the version that I like. And uh, even, even this version, which King James says Satan, if I'm not mistaken, um, Let's just look at that for the people who are interested in the King James. Uh, so, it says Satan. But what's interesting here is we're going to go to the Hebrew and we're going to look at this word that is translated as Satan. And here it is right here. It's, uh, you can see it's pronounced Satan in Hebrew. Satan. And Satan, when you click on it, you can see that it's an adversary, one who withstands. And because it's become known as, as Satan, it's also uh, part of the definition here. It can also be known as Satan, okay? But we're going to look at something. We're going to look at a verse in Job. And we know that in Job, the angels, in Job chapter 1, the angels are standing there in the, in the presence of Yehovah, of God. And it says that Satan came in there 
into their midst as well. So we know that that particular instance, because they're in the throne room, we know that that is Satan himself. This is the, the devil himself. So we'll come down here to where it is, and it says, and Satan came also among them. We'll go to this first so we don't have to hunt for that word. But it says, And Yehovah said to Satan, okay, let's look at the Hebrew. And it says, Vayomer Yehovah uh, el Hasatan. Okay, so it says, uh, And God said to Satan, okay, and I want you to notice something here. Let me pull up my, my little writing tool. You'll see here that this is Ha Satan. And in Hebrew, Ha is the definitive for, um, it's the definitive uh, form. It's the Satan. It's the adversary. So in this particular instance, the adversary is the one that's being talked about. And I think you'll find that every time that it's talking about proper name, proper name Satan, let me just back up here. Every time you see the proper name Satan, it is Ha Satan. This is the Ha. So Ha Satan, Ha Satan, Ha Satan. When it's talking about the adversary, the specific adversary, Satan, it will say Ha Satan. So let's go back. I'm going to erase all these things. Now let's get rid of that. And let's go back to our verse in 1 Chronicles. And it says, and Satan. So let's look and see which, which uh, Hebrew word. Is it Hasatan, the Satan? Or what, what else could it be? And you'll see here that it is just Satan. There's no ha, there's no the in front of that word. I believe that this is not... And this is where I think that most translations messed up. In fact, just about all of the translations that I showed you, with the exception of two, put the proper name Satan on there. But the problem is, is that it, that's not what the, the, the language, the Hebrew language is saying. It's not saying the proper name Satan. It's just saying an adversary stood up against Israel. Because we don't have the, the definitive... Uh, ha in front of uh, the word Satan. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that I don't believe that uh, it, we cannot take uh, 2 Samuel 24 and 1 Chronicles 21 and one version say it was God the Father that, uh, that stood up against Israel. Uh, and then read in 2 uh, or 1 Chronicles, we'll read that it's Satan that, that was... Uh, uh, how was it worded here? State, Satan was the one that stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. Okay, it, it cannot be both of them. And what I did is when I looked up, I looked online to see what people were, were saying about it. And some of the things that I saw, it's like, okay, it was, it was God. It was him. It was his intention. But he used Satan to do it. And I don't, I don't believe that's what's going on at all. I think what it is is... It says that, that in this other translation, or excuse me, in this other verse, uh, let me go to it in 2 Samuel. It says, the displeasure of Yahweh burned against Israel, of Yehovah. What causes him to be displeased with his people? It is disobedience and worship of false, false gods, right? It's disobedience and uh, not following his commandments. He was displeased with these people, so he was set out to punish them, okay? And he incited or caused David, moved David to number his people. And because of that, what he ended up doing was causing a David to make a choice to, to, to do what, uh, you know, to bring the punishment upon Israel. Satan, I have no idea why he would be displeased with Israel, they're not his people. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. But you may be asking, okay, basically what I'm saying is, is that when, when God the Father, when Yehovah is upset with his people, he is, in a, in, in a sense, 
he is acting as an adversary. He is opposed to them and their actions. And I don't think that's too far to say, uh, too big of a leap, because uh, there's another verse that I was going to talk to you about in Numbers 22. And in Numbers 22, it's the, the verse, the passage about Balaam where he's uh, on his donkey, and it says that the angel of the Lord uh, stood before him in, in opposition, and specifically says that the messenger of Yahweh, or Yehovah, stationed himself in the way as an adversary against him. That word adversary is the same word, Satan. Uh, let me find it right here. And you'll notice that it's le Satan, that la in the front is... Uh, is uh, a preposition, or excuse me, not a preposition. It's a uh, prefix. The prefix for, whoa, for, I got it in a little sunlight and it got bright there. Uh, for, and in this particular instance, it's for an adversary. But notice it's not, it's not a, a definitive adversary. It is not the adversary or for the adversary. I'm making that a point because I want you to see that the messenger of, of, of God, or the angel is what some translations say, uh, of God is an adversary to this man because of what he's doing. He is, he is sinning, and I want you to understand that God speaks to this man. He's telling this man that he can only bless Israel. If you understand the story, the man came to Yahweh and said, uh, Yehovah, and he said, Hey, what do, you, what do you want me to do concerning this? And Yehovah was upset with this man because he had in his heart that he wanted to do this because there was money involved. And he kept coming to him, trying to see if he can get another answer. But that's not really the purpose of this video. What I want you to see here is that it is an adversary, not the adversary. Now I want to talk about the word messenger for a minute. Some translations will say angel, and the word here in Hebrew is malach. And malach means a messenger, and because of, of how we understand the messengers, because an angel can be and is a messenger, okay? It is one who brings messages from God, but sometimes the word malach is not an angel, okay? It depends on the context of the particular passage. In this particular passage, I don't believe it's an angel because I, I do believe it was a, a, a supernatural heavenly being. But check me out when I say that Balaam, when he saw who it was, he fell down on his face. Uh, let me see. Yeah. And he bowed his head and fell on his face. Angels do not allow themselves to be worshipped to be bowed down to, anything like that. They say, stand up, I am a man just like you are. This particular quote-unquote angel messenger uh, said nothing. And he said, why have you struck your donkey these three times? See, I've come out to stand against you because your way is reckless before me. Okay? I don't believe he's speaking as he is uh, God. I believe he is, I believe this is a theophany. I believe this is pre-incarnate. Yeshua, Jesus, and he is coming and he's standing as an adversary to this man. I'm putting this out there because I, I believe that that's what exactly what was going on in 2 Samuel 24 and in 1 Chronicles 21. Otherwise, we have an issue. We have an issue where God is doing something and Satan is doing the exact same thing. Okay? Satan is displeased, but, you know... If they were sinning, if, you, if God was displeased at the same thing in 2 Samuel 24, more than likely Satan's not going to be displeased as well. You get what I'm saying? If I'm sinning, then I'm making, I'm making our, our father upset, but Satan's not going to be upset at me sinning. But if I'm walking righteously, Satan's going to be upset at that because he's not winning that battle, but God the Father is not going to be upset with me at walking righteously. Do you get what I'm saying? And it seemed really strange, and, and i be honest with you, I, I really hesitated to, to make this video. I've actually been looking at this for, for a few months now, and I've hesitated because 
it's it's not something that I'm entirely comfortable with. I just took my pen out, sorry. It's not something I'm entirely comfortable with saying that that God is an adversary. But if you think about it, isn't that exactly what he is when he when he is is in opposition to us because of our sin in our life? You know, there's times in the Old Testament where where God had to remove himself from the presence of his people because his holiness would have destroyed them and was in fact destroying them. He had to separate himself because of his holiness. And so in in that essence, he certainly can be an adversary to us if we are walking according to the to the world, if we are walking according to the flesh instead of walking according to his ways. He is certainly an adversary to us. Uh, so that's why I feel a little bit more comfortable in this. We've got to make sense of this. It cannot be Satan. And I think, I think there's a terrible, um, uh, I, I don't agree with the way that, that most translations, uh, Bible translations put this as the proper name Satan, because what it's done is it's, it's given us the idea, okay, Hey, this is Satan because most of us don't spend the time to look into the original language, to look into certain things. And I'll be honest with you, I certainly wouldn't have if I didn't find this discrepancy by what what may seem like just coincidence. Um, so anyway, uh, take that as you will. Uh, I just didn't, uh, didn't agree with the stuff that I was reading online on how people were coming up with this on their own, saying that... Uh, Okay, well, you know, God was uh, the one in charge, but he was using Satan to do his will, his work. Um, I, I don't think that's the case. So, anyway, tell me what you think. Uh, I guess I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, see you on the next video.